Hello and welcome to this week's preview show where Chris Temple is alongside me and we'll be talking through all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 15 minutes or so. Here's what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that defeat at the London Stadium earlier in the week. We'll be joined by Sam Surridge who has been recalled from Swansea this week. And finally we'll look ahead to tomorrow's game against Luton here at Vitality Stadium. Now then, we're going to start back at Wednesday's game and that defeat at the London Stadium. Chris, it certainly wasn't pretty, was it? No. Um, it's hard to know what to say, really. I mean, Willow, my colleague on BBC Radio Stone, is always so enthusiastic and is always buzzing after games and talking about what's happened in the game. He was absolutely speechless on the journey home and I'm sure most of the Cherries fans who made the trip as well. It was just one of those nights where it just went absolutely horribly wrong. Um, you know, 3-0 down inside 35 minutes, it's a, it's a very, very long way back from there. There's a squeak if you can get the next goal, you might have a chance of coming back, but it wasn't to be. Um, you know, and again, the luck, I mean, the, the deflection off Lewis Cook, I saw people saying, oh, he's turned his back and all that stuff. Come on now, that's just, it's so unlucky. There's, I mean, that is just typ typifying the way the run is going at the moment. So those things not bouncing, the penalty decision, I think, was questionable. Um, having seen it back at the time, I thought it was probably a penalty, but when you see all the slow-mos from the opposite angle, I think it was probably it like Martin Noble tripped himself up, to be honest with you. Second goal was a great goal, um, and the fourth goal on the counter attack. And you know, Bournemouth, in terms of attacking options, Fabianski was smoking a cigar for most of the evening, didn't have anything to do. You know, one shot from Rico. Um, so yeah, but I mean, this is the, the I guess symptomatic of the fact that if you're playing players who are half fit, which is all that there is at the moment, this is what's going to happen because Premier League, the Premier League is a intense and it's a ruthless environment. And if you're anywhere below your very best, you get found out. And unfortunately, you know, the players who had to step out there on the pitch weren't at their best because they weren't fully fit. So you, you do feel, I, I do feel a little bit sorry for them because everything unwound in front of them really. And, you know, you talk about obviously the four goals beforehand, but right at the end, Dominic Slanky, he very nearly had his first goal oh. for the club, didn't he? And again, that, I mean, that, that sums up the fortunes, doesn't it, at the moment? He's three yards out. He's, he's actually probably done everything right. A little glance of a header, he's kept it down into the ground, all the things they tell you to do. Um, and it's not only hit the post, it, it could have bounced in off the post easily, bounces back along the line straight into the keeper's arms, not even to Callum Wilson, who's sniffing for a rebound. So, yeah, it was absolutely everything that you could have wanted to start 2020 with didn't happen. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's important. Important, I think, to to put that one down as a you know off the back of a, a busy period of three games in the space of six days um, with a, a, a half fit squad that was always going to be I guess the tip of the iceberg and in the end it was just a bridge too far. Um, so now it's a case of patching up, sort of pressing reset as I think I said in commentary at the time, start the year again um, with an FA Cup game here. And I just want to ask you about that red card in the second half, or, or that wasn't mm. a red card, Aaron Creswell going in and, and initially being shown that red, but VAR overturning it. What were your thoughts on that? Um, my thoughts were that I think he was pretty lucky to get that downgraded, to be honest with you, because it was, I mean, again, it's, everyone seems to say that once you play the ball, you're all right. Well, not these days, you're not, because there's, there's tweaks to the rules about the force of a challenge and endangering players' safety and things. So getting the ball is not always a, a key factor in it. Uh, I just thought that the height of the challenge, the speed he came in, where, uh, the sort of approach of him it, it was all I mean I'm amazed in a way that the way things have been going that Ryan Fraser didn't get seriously injured and it's very you know touch wood thankful that he hasn't um, so yeah I, I think and I think once he's given the red card I think it's a massive call from the VAR to, to downgrade that you can't say that's a clear and obvious error if you ask me when you see some of the ones that have and haven't been given this season so Lee Mason was the VAR he's not always been Bournemouth's friend when it comes to uh, officiating so yeah he didn't have a great night in the VAR box I don't think either bearing in mind he looked at the penalty and said that was still a penalty as well Absolutely. Well, after that game, Captain Simon Francis spoke to AFCB TV. Let's take a look at what he had to say. So, 4 0 defeat, what was your assessment from the pitch? Um, huge disappointment, obviously, with the result. Um, had a good feeling before the game. We knew what their motivation was with the new manager coming in. We knew we would have to match that. Um, there was a good feeling, you know, we used the, the new year, time for fresh. Fresh results, fresh impetus on the on the squad and the way we play. Um, I thought we passed the ball as well as we, as well as well as we have done for a long time, but ultimately not enough cutting edge and, and punished defensively because we switched off too many times in the first half and they got their reward from that. So what happened to that good feeling you spoke of? Why, where did that go to during the first half? Well, when you're fighting resu results at the wrong end of the table, that good feeling can often be or quickly. Be vanished when, when they score a goal. That's all about confidence. Um, of course, we roll in our sleeves up. We want to fight. We want to show desire to get back into the game. Um, but it's hard when you're down there. That's why our results haven't gone our way recently. Um, we haven't looked like scoring enough goals in games to go and win them. Um, 
which is normally our strongest point, always looking like we're scoring, attacking well. Um, but neither part of our game was good enough today. Maybe in the middle of the pitch we were okay keeping the ball, um, passing, rotating. But in either box we weren't clinical enough. Well, that was Simon Francis speaking in his post-match interview at West Ham. Now then, as you can see, we have been joined by Sam Surridge, who has been recalled this week from his loan at Swansea. Sam, thank you for joining us. Just tell us a little bit about your time at Swansea and, and what you've learned there. Um, yeah, no, it's been great, obviously. I've been playing uh, Championship football, so um, I played a lot of games, scored a few goals, so yeah, I'm excited to be back. And for you, we've seen you play at the lower levels with Oldham, Yeovil. What's the Championship like and, and how different is it? Um, yeah, it's different. It's, it's quicker than League Two, so um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's obviously a higher level. But um, yeah, now that I've proved that I can go there and score goals, um, yeah, it's hopefully I can bring that back here. And having scored, as you say, in the lower leagues and then in the Championship, that must do wonders for your confidence now yeah. being back at Bournemouth. Exactly. Yeah, um, that was the main thing. That's always been the main thing. Just go out and loan, and then hopefully improve and come back and get in the first team here. And then now I'm, I'm getting the opportunity to do that. So um, yeah, I'm excited. And you're back at Bournemouth now. When did you find out that you were going to be recalled? Um, I think it was a few nights ago, and then the next night I had to go into Swansea, say my goodbyes and that. And then, um, yeah, and then it was, uh, and I was um, on the trip way back to Bournemouth. So um, yeah, no, it's, it was it was a nice surprise, but uh, I was happy at Swansea. I was, it was doing well, but no, I, I know I wanted to come back here and, and see what happened. But and for you, what was it like? You know, with a, a different group of players at Swansea, mm. a different manager compared to. To Eddie here. Yeah, yeah, he's different, but uh, a lot of their their style, the way they play, is the same. They wanna, they wanna, they're good on the ball, and, uh, and they've got a lot of technical players there. So it's it's gonna be no different coming back here. So um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited, and yeah, just got to see how it goes. And when you found out you were being recalled, did it come as a surprise? Was it in the back of your head at all, or, or um, how did you? Feel? I think for the past month it hasn't been in the back of my head, but before that it was. I, I went out a few injuries. And, um, yeah, it was in the back of my head, but I think for the past month I kind of got it out and just said you're a Swansea player until told otherwise. So, yeah, and as soon as I got the call, um, yeah, I was I was happy. So. And how nice is it for you to you know now be back here with the lads? I'm sure they've given you a warm welcome. Yeah, yeah, it was all nice. I saw him I think before the West Ham game. I think so. Yeah, no, it was nice to see them all. And um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I've got a first training session today, so yeah, I'm excited. And you must be looking forward to that, you know, yeah. playing out there with strikers, yeah. you know, like Callum Wilson, Dominic Solanke, yeah. more people that you can, can learn off. Yeah, yeah, you keep learning, they're, but they're both quality strikers. I'm see Josh King when he comes back, it's, it's going to be good. And um, yeah, I'm just going to keep learning and yeah. And obviously for you, when you were away, you were mm. playing for England under 21s as well, got that call yeah. up and, and got yourself a goal. That must have been fantastic. Yeah, for you. that was a nice moment for me. I think I think the call up was, was especially, uh, yeah, it was, it was special for me and my family. Um, I didn't get a call up, I think, until it was late Sunday night I had to go on the Monday. So, um, yeah, it was a nice surprise and yeah, my family really proud of me. So, yeah. And again, something that you know you can take away from your yeah. time at Swansea, you earned your first call up to the under 21s as well. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's all experiences that I want to bring back here so um, yeah doing well at Swansea obviously getting the call up to um, the England yeah just want to kind of bring more confidence and um, bring it into the team. And just looking ahead to the weekend we've got Luton at home in the FA Cup and, and it could be a great opportunity for you to get yeah. out there in front of the home fans. Yeah the FA Cup's always been um, I've, I've loved playing the FA Cup I've played it a few times now so it's it's, it's nice and and um, yeah I'm looking forward to it it's good for young players kind of showcase what they can do so um, yeah they we can take it into the league game but now I'm excited and um, yeah we've just got to see how it goes. And as you say you must have fond memories of the FA Cup that mm. game at Craven Cottage a couple yeah. of years ago scoring yeah. the winning penalty. Yeah yeah exactly that was a, that was another good moment for me at Oldham I, I love my time there and then I got yeah so yeah that was nice hopefully um, more memories like that on there tomorrow. Perfect. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the fans and wishing you the best of luck for tomorrow and the season ahead. Now then, tomorrow's game is where we're going to turn our attention to, so let's see what Eddie Howes had to say in his pre-match press conference. Permanent signings w will probably be difficult for us, so we're looking um, uh, on the incoming side of, of maybe loans, but maybe nothing. It depends, I think, a lot on our injured players, how quickly they come back and how our squad looks um, towards the end of January. But I think the biggest thing for us is to get some players back who are currently injured. And I think that will give everyone a lift. Um, we know the quality of those players that uh, aren't available at the moment. So I think it's a, a combination of both, maybe. There will be a couple of players that will miss out who have been nursing injuries, have been playing, as I said, after the West Ham game, have been playing with injuries, which has been brilliant of them um, for the team. But we need to look after them and make sure we don't uh, do any more damage 
we know that they'll be motivated for the game and we need to make sure that our our mindset is very, very good. At times like this, I think, is when you have to nail down the basics of what you want in and out of possession and making sure you don't lose what you think are your strengths. I think that's absolutely key for us at the moment. That's what we're going to try and focus on. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking this morning in his pre-match press conference. Chris, an FA Cup game this weekend against Luton. What can we expect from them? From Luton, well, I think we expect a team pretty much in about as bad a form as Bournemouth at the moment. I think they've won two in 14 and Bournemouth have won two in 15. They're bottom of the championship. Um, but they've been promoted twice successively. So, of course, they're going to be finding the new level quite tough. And actually, Bournemouth haven't done them many favours because although they've bolstered their bank balance a little bit, they've obviously nicked one of their best players in Jack Stacey, who I know will be absolutely gutted not to be able to play in this game. He was I spoke to him a few weeks ago and he was he said his phone was going mental when the uh, the draw came out, obviously. He said that Harry Cornick, the, uh, the former Bournemouth winger, who we'll probably see tomorrow, Tomorrow was the first on the phone straight away with a message as soon as that draw came out. So it'll be, and those two could quite easily have come up against each other directly. So that's a real shame for Jack Stacey. And of course, Leicester took James Justin, their other good fullback. So they've they've counted the cost really of um, of having two of their, I guess, their best young players taken away. Um, Graham Jones, the manager, has obviously made his name more as a number two to Roberto Martinez. Um, so he's finding life tough at the moment, having succeeded Mick Harford at the back end of last season at Luton. They're a team sort of made up of quite a lot of what I would say seasoned football league professionals. So you think of people like Callum McManaman, who actually has quite a nice, there's quite a nice form line with him because he, you may remember or may not, was man of the match in the 2013 FA Cup final, which was won by Wigan against Manchester City. Graham Jones, the Luton manager, was the Wigan assistant that day. And Wigan started that cut run by beating Bournemouth. So yeah, you, can, you can just tie it all together. You know, there's, there's always a, a form line somewhere so yeah people like that Andrew Shinney you know um, James Collins up front Ryan Tunnicliffe uh, Sonny Bradley who used to be at Pompey um, you know I'm reading off some of the names of sort of experienced seasoned professionals who've been around for quite a few years so they'll be coming here tomorrow I guess smelling blood in a way they'll know exactly what a bad time born but they're having albeit Luton not having a great time themselves they last one away when Callum Wilson last scored a goal so there's another stat for you, 28th of September. So we're going back a little while. It's pushing 100 days, that is now. So, um, yeah, they're coming here with nothing to lose. The last thing Bournemouth want is a replay. Absolutely not. not no replays, thank you very much. Tuesday night in Leeds. No, you thank you. On that one? Well, again, there's, there's, there's four there as well because fans will have gone back in 2004 when the game was uh, snowed off. Uh, sorry, 2004, it was frozen off a minute before kickoff or a minute after kickoff. 2008, it was snowed off after eight minutes, uh, a Tuesday night at Luton. So, yeah, we do have some uh, do have some sort of negative history with Luton. But, of course, the two teams, in all seriousness, are uh, married up by the fact that in the same great escape season of 08-09, Luton started the season on minus 30, couldn't get out of it, went down out of the Football League after 89 years and have worked their way back since then. So, you know, just as recently as 2014, they were in the National League and here they are now in the Championship. Um, so, it's been a great way back for them they've got plans for a new stadium so and you know their their, their ground is just just only just smaller than this so yeah it'll be it's a good good contest two teams have got a bit of history together um, and you know who knows what team Eddie can play I mean we've spoken to him ahead of his presser this morning and he basically said I've got to go in and take the register and whoever's fit that's when we'll decide who can play because it is that much of a day-to-day -day existence at the moment and do you think we're likely to see a, a few under 21 thrown in there? We've got, you know, the likes of Gavin Kilkenny, who's been training with the first team, Mark Travers, he played against Forest Green and, and Burton in the Cup. We're, are we likely to see those sort of, sorts of faces? I, I would think Kilkenny for sure, Travers for sure, um, Jack Simpson for sure. Um, Alex Dobre may well find himself in the team. You never know, he was on the bench the other day. Um, the difficulty is, of course, you have got to still field a team that is is going to do the, t the club justice. Eddie Howe doesn't hand out first team appearances willy-nilly. He, he gives them to people who he feels has performed in training. Under, some of the under-21s like Corey Jordan, you say, Zeno Rossi, um, Jordan Zamora, a couple of others who've been in and around the first team because of, particularly defensively, I think that's where we're likely to see some of the under-21s. Obviously, Gavin Kilkenny played against Forest Green earlier in the season. Um, Attacking-wise, Sam Surridge, obviously, you know, um, will, will come in, I'm sure. Uh, it just You have to look at who else he's going to play. I mean, Dom Solanke, you think it's a great chance to get his first goal maybe he's one who seems to have been relatively fit and not carrying a problem Andrew Sermon um, will come in I'm sure Junior Stanislas they probably want to get some minutes into if he's not carrying uh, any sort of issues from the West Ham game or the previous one um, so it is quite a hard team to pick to be honest at the moment they need some experience somewhere Francis or Cook I think will have to play because again numbers and, and a bit of seniority in the team so it's a hard balancing act they've got to rest players because 
They can't carry on being half fit. Massive game against Watford next week. So I think it's going to be a mix and match, but it's a great chance for some of those players coming in. And as the rain's coming down, you're looking at me as if you want me to stop talking. I've got one more, <laughs> one more question for you. Harry Cornick, you mentioned him earlier. It would be great to see him back here, won't it? Yeah, brilliant. I mean, again, he's one who, you know, the Terry's signed at an early age and maybe gave an opportunity to quite early on and thought he could be something. It turned out it wasn't going to be here for him, um, but he's gone away and earned his stripes, for want of a better phrase, coming up the leagues with Luton. Um, and, you know, it'd be great to see him back. And he's, you know, a full on local lad who'll know a couple of the uh, under 21s guys pretty well. I'm pretty sure he was the same year as Jack Simpson or there or thereabouts. So, um, yeah, there, there'll be, uh, I'm guessing, some, some great banter and it's a great, a great tie for him. Absolutely. Well, if you are coming here tomorrow, we wish you a very safe journey. But if not, make sure you keep an eye on BBC Radio Sailing and AFCB TV and listen to Chris for the latest updates. Bye for now.